Welcome to St. Wenceslaus Church, where Jesus is encountered, proclaimed, and shared. We extend a special welcome to all visitors on this sixth Sunday in Easter. I'm Gary Batenhorst. Angie Beacom and I are your lectors for this liturgy. Our first announcement comes from Shannon McNeil on behalf of our Charity of the Month, the Stevens Center. Good evening. I'm Shannon McNeil. My husband and I have two kiddos who attend St. Wenceslas. What you might not know about them is that my husband's grandparents started the Stevens Center 40 years ago. After the last of their 10 kids was finally old enough and self-sufficient, Sharon McNeil had a decision to make. She was either going to go back to work or go back to school. That winter, while contemplating her decision, she heard of a homeless man who had passed away due to the cold, trying to stay warm in a dumpster. It was at that moment she knew she had to do something, and this was not going to happen in her community. She purchased a condemned and run-down bar and pool hall, filled it with cots, and welcomed the homeless men and women in South Omaha. As of right now, Stevens Center is the only sober homeless shelter in Omaha, providing help to the vulnerable men and women and families who live in our community. Last year, we served 1,200 people and provided over 212,000 meals. We successfully rehoused 84% of the families and individuals staying in our shelter. We could not do this work without the generosity of parishes in our community, such as St. Wenceslas. So on behalf of the Stevens Center and the entire McNeil family, thank you for your generous support. The Solemnity of the Ascension of Our Lord, a Holy Day of Obligation, is this Thursday, May 9th. See our bulletin or website for Mass times. Next weekend, the Knights of Columbus will be handing out Mother's Day roses in exchange for a suggested donation of $5. All donations will benefit essential pregnancy services as they provide life-affirming pregnancy options and free services for women facing unplanned and under-supported pregnancies. Witness your faith in the real presence of our, at our second annual West Omaha Eucharistic procession taking place Sunday, June 2nd, the Solemnity of Corpus Christi. For more information, see the bulletin. The scripture readings are found in the worship hymnal number 1092. Sharing in the joy of the resurrection, let us stand and greet one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. Our priest celebrant is Father Tim. Our deacon is Joe Coolis. <clears throat> Would invite everyone to please uh, turn around and face the baptism font as we begin with our sprinkling rite. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Dear brothers and sisters, on Easter Sunday, the Lord our God bless this water he created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Please join me in singing River of Glory on the screen.
May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Holy Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his heavenly kingdom. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we we live in remembrance, we may always always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him, and falling at his feet, paid him homage. Peter, however, raised him up, saying, Get up, I myself am also a human being. Then Peter proceeded to speak and said, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the word. The circumcised believers who had accompanied Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit should have also been poured out to the Gentiles, should, for they could hear him speaking in tongues and glorifying God. Then Peter responded, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit, even as we have? He ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the word of the Lord.
on your song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders, his right hand and his holy arm have brought salvation. The His merciful love and his truth for the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed to the nation his saving power, his saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing out your praise. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power, his A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus. 
Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. No one is greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go out and bear fruit that will remain. So whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This command, this I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. This is the sixth Sunday of the Easter season. And our theme in the readings, this is a good one. There's a lot of things going on. Our theme this evening is staying connected. Stay connected. That's a good theme. As baptized Catholic disciples of Christ, that's what we want to do, stay connected. Now, how do we do this? How do we stay connected to Christ, to God? as the school year is completing, coming to an end, and summer vacation just around the corner. Uh, Some of us will be uh, already starting to plan our summer vacations. That's good. Uh, That would include, what, family reunions, maybe. Uh, It's a good time to kind of reconnect with families. There's all kinds of fun things going on. So that's just one thing that we're going to do this summer. Uh, Sometimes in this uh, summer vacation time, the season, I'm going to say May, June, July, August, for four months. Some Catholics find it hard to stay spiritually connected to God, but we're going to stay connected. Today's readings show us how. Very simple. The first reading from the Acts of Apostles, chapter 10. While listening to Peter speak the words of Jesus, Something marvelous happened. The Holy Spirit fell upon them, and they were baptized, and they believed. Did you know that every time we read the Holy Scriptures, the Bible, the Bible and the Holy Spirit are fused together. You can't separate the two, because it's a living word. The Holy Spirit is living, alive. The Bible gives us access to the Holy Spirit helping us stay connected to God all the time. So the next four months, maybe once a month, we're going to take our Bibles, maybe read two or three verses of the Gospels that will keep us connected, spiritually connected. Remember, the Bible is a love letter. It's God's love letter to humanity. So we better read it, stay connected, Uh, In the second reading from the first letter of St. John, chapter 4, the sacred author writes, Jesus is the way of salvation. Stay connected to Jesus. Why? Because of the work of salvation depends on God's love for us. God loves us. Our love for Jesus in this gift of love, God loves us first. We respond loving Jesus, and then that extends out to love one another, love our neighbor, neighbor. Stay spiritually connected, loving Jesus. And then in that beautiful gospel from St. John, chapter 16, Jesus teaches his disciples, 
This is so great. This all brings it together, this theme of connect, connectedness. Jesus teaches his disciples these words, remain in my love. Isn't that simple? It's just what? How, how many words? One, two, three, four. Remain in my love. The love for Jesus is our spiritual key. Think of it that way. Our love of Jesus is our spiritual key to stay connected to God and to one another. You see, sin disconnects us from God, disconnects us from Jesus, and yes, disconnects us from one another. Satan loves this. He wants us to be disconnected perpetually, all the time. This sinful disconnection leads to all kinds of things. Division, anger, violence, human hearts that are filled with hatred. This has been ongoing since the beginning of time. God never intended this. This isn't what God wants, but this is what Satan wants. He's always trying to disconnect. The sacraments keep us connected. Stay connected. Go to confession. For the next four months in this summer season, go to confession once a month. Attend Mass. Don't give up on Mass, Ugh, even when I don't feel like it. Or, or whether there's a, a game going on out there. Uh, in this National Eucharist Revival, stay connected to Eucharist. Maybe once a month for the next four months, spend five to ten minutes in adoration. Just stay there. Let God's, Jesus' love in the Blessed Sacrament embrace us. And maybe the only words we're going to say for the next four, four months, for those five minutes, five, ten minutes, is, Jesus, I love you. That may be the prayer. Uh, personal prayer, we want to keep doing that daily. And all kinds of devotions. Maybe consecration to the Sacred Heart. Uh, our, uh, pray to our, one of our favorite saints. Praying the Divine uh, Mercy. And in the month of May, oh, what is it, 30, 31 days, we have a chance to honor our Blessed Mother. Do it! She's a great mom. She loves us. She'll take care of us. We'll stay connected. I remember uh, way back, 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 in the Lent season, it was 40 days of preparing. It took 40 days to prepare our hearts to enter Holy Week. Jesus' death and resurrection. 40 days. We probably needed more time, but we took 40 days to do that. And the Easter season is 50 days for a reason. The message of Easter is an ongoing revelation. It never stops. The tomb of Jesus is empty, and the power of resurrection love has been poured out Remember uh, the first glorious mystery, the resurrection. Uh, two men in, dressed in dazzling white appeared before the women, and they said, Why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has been raised, exactly as he promised. So the power of resurrection love is eternal and has been poured out from the grave, from the tomb. So one saint wrote, then where is it today? Where is this resurrection, power of the resurrection of love? If the tomb is empty, where is it? The answer is easy. It's happening right now. This power of resurrection love is in here. The tomb is empty. It fills our hearts. That's incredible. Stay connected. So maybe for the next few weeks, no one's going to know this, this is between you and God and myself, and I'll be doing this too for the next few weeks. As the school year ends and the summer season approaches, our prayer can be this. It's a very simple prayer, something like this. Maybe as we're brushing our teeth, drinking some coffee and toast. Maybe it'll be at noon or in the evening just before we go to bed. We'll pray, oh God, give me the grace to always always stay spiritual connected to you in love in the name of the father and the son and of the holy spirit and a good way to stay connected we always are is that we're going to stand and pray we're going to pray our faith in one voice 
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. As Jesus invites us to follow him, we turn our hearts and minds to the Father and present our prayers and petitions before him this evening. For the universal church that our work would reflect the complete and unconditional love of God, we pray to the Lord. For the resolution of global conflict, especially in the Mideast, that all sides would recognize and receive the peace that only Christ can give. We pray to the Lord. For those impacted by recent storms and tornadoes, that they would receive help and hope from God and from others. We pray to the Lord. For those graduating this spring, that they would be reminded of the Lord's guidance and loving presence during the next chapter of their lives. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died, especially Daniel Craddock, for whom this Mass was offered. We also pray for John Philip, father of Mary Kay Garcia, and for Sharon Peterson, sister of Chuck Mack. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For the prayers written in our book of petitions, and for the unspoken needs we now hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Almighty Father, in your loving mercy, please hear and answer the needs we have brought before you this evening because we ask them through Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Then we'll have our children's collection, please. I have loved you on the screen. I have loved you.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ, our risen Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of the old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, Every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your holy name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit 
may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Matthew, St. Mark, St. Luke, St. John, St. Peter, St. Paul, St. Wenceslas, St. Dominic, St. Francis of Assisi, St. Clare of Assisi, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and George our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Thank you. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. To the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord.
Our song for communion is in your worship hymnal, number 698, No Greater Love, number 698.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, the strength of the saving food, through Christ our risen Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Good job. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Our closing hymn is in your worship hymnal, number 642, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, number 642. <clears throat>